show me. I'm the martial arts film freak, and I watched Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. Son, it's time for you to take your place by my side. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, I'm just going to start calling it Shang-Chi to shorten that, is a 2021 film, the latest in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and is directed by Destin Daniel Crenton, starring a plethora of wonderful people, Simu Liu, uh, Aquafina, Tony Lung, of course, uh, Ma uh, I'm going to butcher this name because I think this is like her first movie, I've never even heard of her before, but she's wonderful, um, Menger... Zhang, uh, yes, uh, Fala Chen, Michelle Yeoh, uh, and just many other people. Florian, uh, Montanu, uh, from, I believe he was in Creed 2. Pretty big part in this movie. And of course, you get some other people peppered in there. Some Hong Kong, some Kung Fu legends and big names on the rise. You get a little guest appearance from UNY. You get Andy Lee behind the Death Dealer mask, because that got something good coming up with him real soon. And just a whole bunch of other wonderful people. The film is about Shang-Chi, who uh, was raised essentially by a warlord, and uh, on his first mission, on his first hit at the age of 15, he just never went back. He just went to America and stayed, because screw that. And uh, his dad come looking for him. His dad comes looking for him for a reason, he's got some bad intentions, and Shang-Chi's gotta stop him. You know, this year has, if you watch my channel, you know this year has just been an absolute disappointment. From Hollywood. I had some really huge hopes. I had three movies. Three movies coming out this year. Mortal Kombat. Huge turd. Snake Eyes. Drove me mad. Drove me furious. Go watch that video. Go watch that review after this one. Don't watch it if you have sensitive ears. I said the F word a lot. And Shang-Chi. I had every reason to hope and pray and believe that Shang-Chi was going to be incredible. People behind the scenes, Andy Chang, Brad Allen, rest in peace from the from Jackie Chan's uh, stunt team, coming in and, and doing some second unit stuff, being the action coordinator, the fight choreographer. Someone like Joseph Lee from Marshall Club is also behind the scenes. You have Andy in the Death Dealer mask, and just the whole stunt team was incredible. But there's also some other reasons you could think, maybe this isn't gonna be very good. A lot of Hollywood, in my opinion, does things every now and again to cater towards China. And China does one thing right now. They don't make kung fu movies. So I'm thinking, if they're going to want this movie to play big in China, they're probably not going to pepper it in with good fight scenes because China don't really do that anymore. Very rare. And thankfully, holy God, finally this one nails it. Hollywood. You won for three, but the one, the one you had, whoo, baby, it was good. I was just so happy, so happy this entire movie that the editing was not horrendous. That's another reason I was scared. Marvel editing is horrible. The fight scenes in Marvel movies, well, yes, grandiose and incredible because we love our Marvel characters. I'm a huge Marvel fanboy. I'm a huge Marvel nerd. Oh my god, the fight scenes in most of these movies are absolute trash. That's one reason I was scared. But thankfully, no, the fight scenes in this are not trash. The camera editing, everything, it's all nothing but a step going in the right direction. Going straight up to the moon. Wrestling reference for the video. Woo, I was so happy. But before I get into any of that, before I get into the action, let's talk about some other things in this movie that I do think were quite good. I enjoyed the characters. The characters in this movie, there's a plethora of them, and I thought they were all wonderful. Uh, Simu Liu, of course, as Shang-Chi, he is good. He is probably not my, my favorite performance of the movie, but he is still quite good. He is a good charismatic lead. Uh, Aquafina as the best friend. Now, Aquafina uh, can sometimes be an acquired taste, you know. 
Um, I think most people can enjoy The Farewell, where it is a much more tame performance. Uh, you know, she is she puts in just an acting tour de force for that film. Uh, but then you get something maybe like Crazy Rich Asians, where she is she's a bit more she's a bit eccentric there. And then I think her show Nora from Queens, not for everybody. That is full Aquafina. She has given all of it to that show because she's the main character. It's her right. In this, she knows that she is the supporting for this. She is not the lead. However, that being said, in moments where her levity, her comedy does need to come through, she's there. She nails it every single time. But when she just needs to be there to bounce off the other characters, the leads, she does it perfectly. Whether it be comedy, whether it be drama, suspense, she nails it. Aquafina is wonderful. Michelle Yeoh is always wonderful, but of course, Tony Leung is just absolutely legendary. With this role, he really goes, he does little with this role, but with that little sort of giving a lot. Being this ruthless warlord that's been alive for thousands of years, he just doesn't really need to emote for things. He's not really shocked by many things, but when it when he is, it's just those little little motion, little motions in his face, little expressions that really go a long way, a little going a long way. He is just absolutely wonderful. He is threatening, he is terrifying, he is heartwarming. When he is being a loving father and a devoted husband, he is awesome, but when he is also just just being a quiet, quiet menacing dude, he is scary. Of course, the special effects were awesome. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, the, the, the way the rings looked. I enjoyed all the creatures that we do see uh, in like the trailer and stuff, and stuff. Those, of course, play a big role towards the end. They looked awesome. There's a bit of touchy green screen, but you know what? Even the best of these movies have some touchy green screen. Black Panther Civil War, there's some moments there with the, with the green screen and stuff that doesn't always hold up. There's a few things like that here, but it's definitely, it definitely still looks really good. The story was fantastic. I really did enjoy it quite a bit. I enjoyed the characters, uh, you know, just reasons for everything. I enjoyed, I enjoyed everyone's purpose. All great. Uh, I enjoyed that it did blend perfectly well into the known Marvel Cinematic Universe. As I said, I am a Marvel fanboy. Uh, but also, it perfectly blends in uh, sort of an idea that I always had of like a pocket dimension kind of thing, possible other universe, without being too crazy out there. What I'm thinking is like, my favorite example is Kunlun, where uh, Iron Fist gets his powers. Like, you can't just stumble upon Kunlun. You have to go through some sort of kind of portal thingy. It's not really on Earth, but it is on Earth. It's earthly. It's a realm. It's an earthly realm, but it's not just like... You're not just going to walk through a forest and find it. And this movie did that well. I enjoyed how this movie did that. Now let's get to the action. Let's get to the Kung Fu. I'm the Martial Arts Film Freak. I'm here to tell you why this movie's fight scenes were great. I'm not just here to say, oh my god, they look good. I'm trying to give you good reasons here. Because I've had great reasons as to why the... <laughs> Sorry for the cursing. I'm trying not to do that in this one because I really did it badly in the Snake Eyes one. Uh, I, I, I really went into detail as to why the, the Mortal Kombat and the Snake Eyes ones were horrible, but I'm going to try to go into detail as to why this one absolutely nailed it. Finally. First of all, small detail. It's not really a small detail, but it's there and I liked it a lot. Um, Wen Wu, uh, Tony Leung's character, his soldiers, his people, uh, carry this weapon that I absolutely loved. It was the Shaolin um, monks, uh, Shaolin um, uh, hook sword. That's what I was trying to think of. The hook sword. But uh, it was electrified and i just enjoyed that taking a classic and sort of modernizing it and it made me happy every fight scene stands on its own every fight scene has its own uh decor its own environment that it utilizes perfectly every fight scene is tailor-made for its situation and i loved that uh starting out of course with the train fight scene this movie gets to it pretty quick and for the first probably 25 30 minutes really doesn't let up with most of the action for the most part you get little breathers in between it um but the train fight scene you of course get simu lu looking awesome but what that entails is within that tr within that the the train or the bus i guess um you have to have close quarters combat so the close quarters choreography is wonderful but then you also get him weaving and dodging through the railing of the train through the, of the bus and it's just that's just one example of how you have to utilize your environment. You can't just be throwing punt. I just it just works. Close quarters combat on a close quarters bus. Have him weaving in and out through the railing, through the poles of the bus, perfectly utilizing the environment. Something like uh, the bamboo uh, scaffolding we see in the trailer. It is just used to perfection. It's going up multiple, up and down multiple levels, swinging around. Again, close quarters choreography, perfect. You would then just, it's just so much more. You get out to Simulu versus. 
uh, Shang-Chi versus uh, Death Dealer, and that's just two people who know each other's styles because one trained the other, and it's just, they're mirroring each other's styles, but of course one's got to be better, one's got to beat the other, and it just works. That one is just more fast-paced, it's more modern, knife fight. What I, I bring up the style of it being more modern because this movie definitely blends different styles throughout it. You're not going to get the same kind of fight scene throughout the entire movie. This movie is full of wuja elements, and I know a lot of people do not care for wuja. You know, I've I've got a video talking about watching a hero with people and people laughing during the movie because they don't like the flying. But what the wuja does here, it, it's it's done to perfection. There's only one real fight scene where the wuja is more prominent, but in that it is absolutely beautiful. The special effects, the landscape, the costumes, the choreography, it's gorgeous. And I'm like. I genuinely think that even if you don't care for Wuja, you will still find some sort of enjoyment in that one fight scene, even though it is far more Wuja than just modern kind of modern kind of style. Um, I would want to say one of the forms in that, one of the styles in that was Tai Chi, and the Tai Chi is absolutely gorgeous. The contrast, this is one thing I love in fight scenes. I love the contrast of styles playing off one another. Um, Tony Leung's character's style is so straightforward uh, I want to say it's Hungar, I could be wrong, uh, but it plays perfectly off the Tai Chi, it's just more evasive and just manipulating the opponent and it looks beautiful, it is effective on the eye, it, it plays beautifully. But then in other scenes, the Wuja and the choreography accentuate one another. There is not one that over oversteps the other. They both are used perfectly in uniformity to create something and I absolutely love that. I was worried, based on some of the later trailers, that this movie was going to lean really hard into the magic, into the special effects, and I didn't want that. I wanted martial arts. I wanted martial arts action, not a whole overabundant use of magic. And this movie did that perfectly. The magic, the special effects, anything like that, it is only used to amplify the martial arts. Not the choreography specifically, the martial arts. I think that's a different thing, and I think it is wonderful. One thing I also love about a good uh, fight scene, good choreography, is I love when the choreography is tailored to the characters. Um, again, like I sort of said with one of the earlier, with the with the major wuja fight scene, but towards the end, when you do have the, the special effects, the wuja and the choreography all perfectly accentuating each other to, to define the martial arts of the film, it was absolutely wonderful. I loved how it was played. Um, you get each character having their specific style. So uh, Simu Lu is not just this sort of circular Tai Chi, I, I guess-esque style. Um, he is almost a blend at times. And that fits his character so well. And again, he's opposed to Tony Leung who is this more straightforward, the way they're using the powers, the way they're using the rings, the way the rings are flowing with Simu Liu, with Shang-Chi, it looks wonderful. And again, the way Tony Leung then uses the powers to just straightforward blast, it's perfect. It is, it is perfect. Shang-Chi uses the rings the way he uses it. It is this graceful, just flow of, defensive and offensive at the same time whereas uh Wen Wu Tony Leung the way he uses it is just so forward so aggressive so offensive so violent at times that the perfect the perfect opposition of graceful defense plus offense opposed to violent brutal nothing but offense it just is incredible also I mean Yuan Hua the man's amazing also, if you're a huge martial arts nerd, you know you follow martial artists on YouTube and whatnot. You quickly, you see him for a split second, you see him? It's a, Jay Kwan. I like Jay Kwan. Jay Kwan's great. Uh, but I should get to, uh, 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 not ranking, um, scoring this movie. This is what I was trying to think of. I am going to give Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. There's something about in my head that's saying like it's not a five out of five, but... At the same time, I don't really have a fault with it. And like, I don't want to like just jump the gun and say five out of five. I've done that with one or two movies and people have been like, I don't, I, th I think you're missing this point. 
and and I, I would get their point. I would say, okay, I understand that. Maybe I'll give it a rewatch sometime. But you know what? I have had such a crap year with Hollywood martial arts films. I've given them ones, one out of fives, probably lower. Honestly, I don't remember what I gave Mortal Kombat. I want to be happy. And this movie made me happy. The martial arts is beautiful. The characters are great. The story is good. The acting performances are delightful. The special effects are good. The fight scenes are incredible. And the martial arts is magnifique, beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and give Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. Five rings out of five. I know there's ten. Five rings out of five. Five electric Shaolin hook swords out of five. Five Michelle Yeohs out of five. Five Andy Lee is the god dang death dealers out of five. If you disagree with that, tell me why. If you do agree with it, tell me why. Uh, tell me what you think of this review in the comment section down below. Tell me your thoughts. What did you think of Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings? Have you seen it? Are you going to see it? Are you... Uh, just wait. Are you going to watch it on Disney Plus? Go see this movie in the. Well, I mean, that's up to you. We're living in a pandemic right now. Uh, yeah, do all those things in the comment section down below. Tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm right. Tell me just your opinion in general because I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear some good martial arts discourse on this absolutely wonderful martial arts film. Hollywood finally got it right. Hollywood nailed some kung fu on the big screen. And that just brings me so much joy. Oh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Head over to Facebook, where there is the Martial Arts Film Freak Facebook page. Instagram, Martial Arts Film Freak. Tristan underscore Glover on the Twitter. Martial Arts Film Freak on TikTok. Oh, I'm just so happy that we finally got a good one. One for three. I'm cool with having one for three, as long as that one is, like, really good. And I'm telling you, this is just, just quite great. I am, I'm just, I'm riding on a high. I'm really happy. Struggling to end this video. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good day. Day.